Hi, I'm Missy Harris, the director of the Lincoln County Library System. I am very excited to welcome you to the Watch Painting with Judy Gonet. Before class begins, I'd like to take a moment to thank the Lincoln County Library System and our facilitators and the Wyoming Arts Council for providing monetary support in making this program possible. Judy Ganay received her Master of Fine Arts in Printmaking and Painting from the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Yeah. After completing her graduate work, she moved aboard a sailboat in the Caribbean and on the island of Trinidad for her pastels and oil paint. Eventually, she moved into watercolor painting. She spent 10 years sailing and painting before settling in Wyoming. She has taught at the University of Wyoming, Western Wyoming Community College, the Jackson Art Association, and has held many classes at her studio, the Creative Spirit Studio in Bedford, Wyoming. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the wash painting with Judy Donet. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Wait. Is everybody on? Everybody here? Hi, I'm Missy Harris, ooh, the director ooh, my of the bad. library system. I am very. <laughs> okay, hi again. <laughs> okay. Uh, today, yeah. okay. All right, today we are going to be making. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is we're. Is it back in the back? Okay. Yes. I figured that all on my own. <laughs> okay, so today we are going to be working with a really simple image, a silhouette. And what we're going to learn today <clears throat> to do is to blend our colors on the page. Okay, <clears throat> and the two colors that you're going to need if you choose to do two colors is your mid yellow and your vermilion. Okay, yeah, vermilion and mid yellow. And I changed my palette here so it fits better on the camera, but everybody knows where to put their paints in their palette now. So, And also, you're going to want to take down one piece of paper. I have two here just so I can demonstrate on two. Take down one piece of paper, smooth side up. So you have two sides of your paper. Uh, one is textured and one is smooth. We want a smooth side. I can't believe I'm doing this thumbs up. Smooth side. <laughs> okay. They're mid, mid, I think yellow mid or, yeah, yellow mid and vermilion. Yellow mid and vermilion. Should we want to mix them with water and get that with it? Um, make it uh, paintable, yes. That was a good question to our guests. You want to put it in your palette and then add just, just a tiny bit of water because today you don't want a lot of water in there. Um, so just a tiny bit of water, and I put, I put you know, I, I give up on the pea size and all that. If you need to add more, add more, okay? This last week, I kept running out of paint. And this is a pretty simple process, um, and if at the end we all get done really fast, then we will go ahead and do another one, but I think it's best to just start with one. So again, what we're going to be doing today is this. So you guys get to choose what silhouette you want to do. So when everybody is taped down and has their paints prepared, give me a thumbs up. Except for those of you who are in the studio audience. <laughs> And the brush that we're going to be using today is going to be the half inch square. Okay. Oh, yes. yes. So Labarge is asking if they also need to do the purple that you have. No, at this point, we're just going to do uh, the mid yellow and the vermilion. This was my tester. Thank you. Thank you. For that Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
So not too much water because we want this to be a thicker, uh, thicker paint. The reason that we want to put it down a little bit thicker is so that we can um, uh, meld it together as we're going up, as we're doing our wash up the page. If you have it on too thinly, this is a good example of when I put it on too thinly here, you can see that it gets quite streaky. Though we can resolve that, that's part of the lesson today. So today we're working in the mid, yellow mid and the vermilion. These are called analogous colors because they're next to each other on the color wheel. And they're very safe to work with when you're working with analogous colors. No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> the dancing teacher. <laughs> so you're gonna have one one with yellow and one with red, all right? And let me know with a thumbs up when you're ready different locations. Yes. So Star Valley is good. Alpine is good. Cokeville. All right, everybody's ready. Everybody's ready. All right, good. All right, so we have my yellow and I have my vermilion. Um, and my half inch wash square brush. And what I'm going to do is remember the first week we were going all the way back and forth, right down to the tape. We're going to be doing that again. We're going to start with yellow down at the bottom. And what I want you to focus on is keeping, bringing that yellow up about um, a little less than halfway up the page, all right? And then uh, the vermilion is gonna come down. I'm gonna show you how to do that, all right? So starting at the bottom of the paper with my yellow, what I'm doing is, and this is again, very quickly done, back and forth like this. <laughs> You can see I'm already kind of running out of paint there, so I obviously did not have quite enough paint, but that's good. The yellow is coming about halfway up. And then I'm kind of kind of coming with the vermilion. And I'm going to come from the top down. Okay. So the vermilion is coming from the top down. And you can see that it takes, you know, more than a, a pea, a pea pot. P, P size uh, water paint there. So coming straight down. Okay, can everybody see this? And you can see that uh, I dropped my brush. <laughs> you can see that I did run out of paint right there. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush. And then what I want to do is I want these two colors to blend in the middle. All right, so what I'm doing, going to do is I'm going to come from the yellow and I'm going to go straight up into that uh, the vermilion area like this. And you can see how it's starting to blend. I'm going to go straight up and then I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to come down with the vermilion and I'm going to go into the yellow like that. And you can see how it's blending nicely. If you get streaks, do not worry about it. I will show you how to correct that later. Oh, and there you go. That's what you're going to do. So blending it with the yellow about almost halfway up from the bottom up to about halfway up. And then the vermilion comes from the top down and you go right into the yellow so that you're getting a nice blend of color right through the middle. You want to keep this area fairly light in color and value so that our image, our black image shows up really well.
and you want it to be thick. You don't want the white of the paper to show through as much as you can. So the thicker, the well, the thicker the better, but not too thick, obviously. And then blending through the middle. Everybody give me a thumbs up and your paper looks like this. I get a pencil. Do you want to get a pencil? Do you need one? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So many things at once. And again, if you end up with streaks, um, we're going to let it sit for a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the streaks at this point, but if you do have streaks, I'm going to show you how to collect it. Actually, I'm going to do one over here that's streaky, so I can show you how to do that. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice time. It's nice time. Let's see something different. <laughs> Michael, how's yours? <laughs> Once we get to the next part, I'll come by and look. Oh, I was supposed to do the streaking. Oops. Here, okay, I'm trying. I forgot. I forgot that I was supposed to do this badly. Yeah, I'll stop it. It's, it's not as easy to do it wrong. Okay. Even this one's a little streaky. Okay. Here's the <laughs> I just looked over my glasses over here. So I, what do we need to do? Which brush were you? You use them square, right? Well, I actually I use both of them, okay. but I use this. Mm -hmm. I think that's what Just gets a little smooth. So we have more thick down here. So I'm just going back and forth and smoothing it out. Usually it wouldn't add that much water. Your image is not here. So if you're really streaky and you have some thick areas and some thinner areas, you're going to need to add a little water and then just keep going back and forth. And this isn't done yet. I'll be back. That's okay. not done. No, we're going to wait for it to dry just a little bit. It looks pretty good to me. Are you still working on it? No. Wait, <laughs> Yeah, I'm just wetting it and I'm yeah. the color in. Yeah. I just wet it a little bit. Okay, do I need to do more? I like it. 
All right. Well, I like that. <laughs> I like it too. Because it's very atmospheric. If, if you need to get more of that yellow up in the computer, you need to light a little bit. And it leaves you green. Yeah, bring more yellow up into the computer. The reason you want it to be pretty light down at the bottom is so that your image shows, shows up. It looks really good. Oh, it's mine. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> I focus right in on that over there. Yeah. Oh, but yours is good. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. I hope to pin it just a little bit at the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want it to be a little bit lighter at the bottom. And then we were talking about the streaks. I'm coming in right here with a wee bit of water on my brush and just going back and forth. So when everybody gets their paper looking at this, give me a thumbs up. And so that's what I'm doing, I'm smoothing it out. Boy, it looks a lot worse on camera than it does in person. Oh, it's all good, it's all good. Okay, we're gonna let this sit and drop. Okay, so we're waiting on thumbs up from everybody else. Um, what everybody's gonna to wanna to do when we get the thumbs up, you can look at this and decide which one you're going to use. I would eliminate this one. All of these right through here, I don't think will be usable. They're too small and this one, I, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but you can use this one, this one. Second. Oh, I can't see. Can you see? Yeah. Well, so I could, we, we could see it before. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm looking at this off camera stick. All right, hang on. So we do not want to use this one, this one, this one, or this one, okay? You can choose this one for those of you who kind of have more experience. You can paint your reeds like that if you want, like this one, right? We'll talk about them in order. Um, but the one that I would choose is over here. I didn't look like this one, okay, or this one or this one. Um, this is also a great one, be a great image on there, but we're gonna have to bring the tree all the way up to the top and that one would be a good one as well. So pick which image you wanna do. And when everybody has gotten this far, give me a thumbs up and I'll show you how we're gonna transfer an image from here onto that, okay? And it's going to involve a pencil. Is that you that said yes to me now? Uh, yeah. You, you know, actually, you can use the deer. It was the black, the deer in the trees, but the black line that went through there might not make sense. Oh, that deer. Okay. We got any thumbs up from anybody? We we do have some thumbs up, but one one group is uh, didn't have the silhouettes, so we're just waiting for that right oh, now. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so that one 
Can I go ahead with that yes. we're waiting for? All right, I'm going to go ahead while we're waiting for that group to get the silhouettes. I'm just going to move this aside for now um, and show you how we're going to do this. So when um, watercolors, wash papers, uh, transfer an image, what we usually do is put a piece of graphite paper. Uh, it's like a, this is old school, but we are the creative aging class, right? It's like carbon paper, only it's graphite, so you can erase it, okay? So we're going to basically create our own graphite transfer by flipping that paper over, and on our image, we're going to take our pencil and do this. And just run, put graphite on there really smoothly. You don't actually have to do the whole, the whole silhouette, but it would be easiest to do it that way. You want it to be fairly thick, pretty solid. Okay. It relates to what's dry, right? What to what's dry? This is my silhouette, and I flipped the paper over, and I took my pencil, and then I ah. Okay, I'll show you the magic because I see a lot of confusion. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So 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 you put your painting. The painted paper is to the side I right just now. Put that to the side. Yes. Okay, it's over there, so that I can show you how to do this next step. All right. Once you have done that, all you have to do is trace like this, hold it in place, lift it up, and there's the image. Okay. Still seeing confusion. Okay, so I'm tracing the whole image. I'm doing it on the white piece of paper just to demonstrate to you guys, okay? Are we supposed to be three? So which, yes. So which still is next to the one just sort of the ocean up over? And then we will take this and go. Oh, we're going back. Oh, yes. Why are you naming about this one? It's just one of the magic bits. Oh, that one fits, but. um. You're going to have that black line going through. You can do it if you want. The black river or whatever it is. Yeah. It's not like uh, but do it if you want. Oh, okay. Because I'm looking at this one and it's going to be. And I said that you would have to draw the tree taller. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Unless you want to put a meaning in it. So. I'm just going to show you the cactus. So you can see that the image has transferred. Okay. So what we're doing is when we do this with the pencil, we are basically creating our own graphite paper, our own carbon paper. Then we're turning the image over and we're going to put it on our painting. And then we're going to trace it and we're going to have the image on the paper and then we're going to paint it in black. Okay. So right now you need to pick a silhouette that you want to do, and then you're going to put your pencil and do they have their silhouette yet? Yes. Okay, good. And you're going to take your pencil and rub it all over your silhouette on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. All right. And I just did it on my practice piece of paper so that you can clearly see what we're doing. And I'll show you how to do it on the other one, mm -hmm. on the painted one. Mm -hmm. On the what? Oh. I'll do that. I could do that. You're in the two. So you have two. Which one are you going to do? It's going to be the big game. The other one is going to be kind of hard. It's going to be the Okay. So, again, like if you want to do. um. The grasses, you know, you get a choice of what image you want to do. That generally, it's pretty easy to paint, but I understood that some people might not be familiar with the grasses, and so that's the one that I did. And so I gave you a silhouette of that if you just want to do grasses, right? And then we're in Wyoming, so you know. Of course, we don't have cactus here. Do we have cactus here? Yeah, I think I've seen. There's cactus down in Alpine. Really 
Okay. I know that for a fact. Okay. Or, we yeah. have we have established that yes, there is indeed taxes here in Wyoming. I have one in my car and it was advice. <laughs> I had a great deal of fun when I was in Arizona sketching the taxes. All right, I'm going to return to this, okay, which should be relatively dry by now, and I'm going to prove to you that this works. Is everybody crossing their fingers for me? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just putting this, uh, my image down at the bottom like this, and making sure that it's fitting in there. And then I'm using the point of my pencil to trace it. I am holding it in place so I don't end up with a uh, kitty wampus cactus or a person. Did you notice I have a young sound? Kitty wampa person? Okay, so. And you may need to resharpen your pencil after you've done that. I'm, I'm pretty successful in mine right here. Okay, I'm going to lift it up, but I'm going to hold it in place. I'm just going to lift it up to show you. See? So the image is right there. Remember when I said don't move it? <laughs> and I just moved it. Cross. I'm doing the horse now. So you do you put two on the bottom. And I'm putting it right on my painting. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. It's dry enough. Hey, let me come around and check. Thank you. Even if it is a little bit wet, what you will end up doing if you can keep your fingers off the rest of the painting so you can take some paint off. You will end up making uh, a little bit of an indentation, which will be readable also. Uh, but your painting, uh, your background should be dry. No, because I don't have to hold on. You just want to this part of the top. And that's what we're doing. And this would be how it's supposed to work. Okay. And pick it up to make sure that your transfer is working. Because you're still wet. Yeah. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> Yours, yeah. You can go ahead and just draw and pencil right on top of it if you need to see it a little bit better. I know. I have a crank one at home, you know. So that is how you transfer an image.
I mean, is there something special about this or is it the, the, the left goes through? I mean, the, the left, uh, it's so it's just graphite and it it goes through the paper. No, um, you created like carbon paper when you do this right here. It's, it's like carbon paper. It's like you have a piece of carbon paper and you put it here and then you put your image on top and trace. Only we put the graphite on the back. So this is what, when you press down, this is actually what's transferring right here. It worked. Yeah, it worked. Trust works. the process. I guess the question I have is, is would, I mean, did you do this with any image? I mean, there's nothing yes. special about the. Oh, no, there's nothing. There's nothing special about the images. As a matter of fact, some are quite failures. <laughs> Yeah, so that and that's how um, generally watercolor artists want to know what they're going to do before they start. So this is how we would transfer an image. Some people would just wrong, right? <laughs> I guess sketching or something for Normally, you make a drawing and then you transfer it. Depending on your detail. If for, for an example is if I were doing a commission on someone's home, um, I would probably do this for the building yeah. because there are so many 25 roof line buildings. So, you know, it's kind of hard to get all the perspective right. So I would do this. I would bring it up to the size of the painting and then put my graphite down and then transfer the outline of the building so they get the perspective. And then I would put that aside and start the painting. So it's one way to transfer easily. And uh, it's a cheat. I mean, we could have on that course, right? Could we have on that course? No, we could have drawn it at all. Why did we borrow it to the book But I can't trace it. I've got an that look like tarantula, so. <laughs> Make that cowboy into a cowboy. I was thinking that what you could do is add a ponytail, okay. just like a ponytail swishing out like yeah. that. Because yeah. I did think yeah. that right when I said yeah. how for yeah. And I don't know why. Oh, a cowboy. <laughs> I am trying to be, you know, whatever. No. <laughs> a cow human. <laughs> That's definitely. Amazing. <laughs> Did it turn out? Yeah. Good. I'm so And when everybody gets this far, give me a thumbs up. Oakville and camera are ready. Going to be bringing out our faithful Black King Ben. Alpine's ready. Does anybody out there want to add a moon? I did, yes. Okay. Um, what I would do for the moon, I just measured, and a really big moon could be the bottom of your cup. Okay. So I'm going to, you're going to do a moon over. You can do a moon up so that it is not um, like up in, the, up in the sky. You can put it up here. 
if you want the cowboy person, I can't believe really I keep saying that. If you want the cowboy to be in front of the moon, then what I would do is very careful. You, actually, you don't have to be careful. I think there's black hair. I would just put the cup kind of over him, and then I'm going to do it like this. Take my pencil and just go around like that. Oh, this is going to be a not very, um, it's an eclipse moon, okay? <laughs> Okay, so if you want to do a moon, what I've done is I've drawn a moon around the cow. <laughs> There's no cow in sight, okay? Around the human on the horse, all right? Otherwise, you don't have to do a moon. Um, if you're doing another image, you know, the same thing. Just draw these circles so that it intersects with your image. Or you can put the moon up here. Okay, this is a really big moon. Obviously, I'm exaggerating it because that's the only circle I have. If you have a quarter in your pocket or 50 cent piece. Afton, are you guys ready to continue? <laughs> okay, everybody's ready. Okay. Um, for the moon people i'm going to get people going with the um silhouette first and then we'll come back and do the moon okay so you're going to want your black paint and i mean just like we painted it before i would suggest using your uh, number six round for this number six round number six round. okay making it um just add a little bit of water to your brush This is a really fun painting and it's really easy. It's any kind of black paint on there, and then you're just going to paint it in. Hold on, cover your uh, cover your lines. I just painted a horse with blinders on. <laughs> For this, because we do have a lot of detail in it, you're going to want that paint to move quite freely, which means adding just a little bit more water than we did with our yellow and our um, vermilion, but not too much water. If you put too much water in, remember from last week when we were doing the daisies on the black, you have to have it quite thick. If you have it too thin, then what you're going to do is reactivate the yellow underneath, and you're going to end up with not a solid black. So then from here, all you do is paint your image. Usually what I do is I kind of outline it first and then come back and fill it in. Thanks. If you're doing the um, this image right here, remember to leave that little space there. I just painted mine in, uh, but it's, it doesn't look that bad if you did paint it in, so don't worry too much about it. And then you just paint it in. Hello. Okay, thank you. Rains. I think they're called rains. Are they called rains? Yeah. So Say I could say chocolate. What is a chocolate? I think it's a chocolate. Oh, is that why they call them folk? I think so. It's good. It's good. Yeah, I'm from so I can make it. <laughs> and, okay. and it's true. And it's okay. True. We'll say you said something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's too what? It's like too thick for like the legs and. 
Yeah, so you might have to thin the paint a little bit. I mean, the brush is like. So oh, if you want, you can try using your, your rigor um, for the detail. Um, if you're doing the reeds, you probably do want to use the rigor. I'm not sure yet, but you might find that easier to not use the um, rigor brush. It's just the rigor brush. Uh, I'm sorry, this one is good. Uh, there you are, right there. <laughs> It's this one, the long one. Oh, because okay. it's tinier. It's just um, it's longer, so you just have to work okay. with it a little differently. But that will give you that, um, like especially the space between the cactus. So some people might find it easier to work with a smaller tip, smaller brush. Um, normally, I would paint like this with a rigger, but it seems to be working just fine and. Is not quite so funky as number six. Did that help, Tamar? Yeah. Good. So what, what Tamar was saying was that for these details, it's pretty hard to work with a uh, number six brush. So she went to the rigor so she could get those details in a little bit more. If you work with the number six and you just focus on painting with your tip, you should get a pretty good result too. So again, what this has shown us is how to blend on paper and then how to paint on top of it without reactivating the yellow and the red underneath. Looking at my painting, but I did not draw a circle on the painting. I thought it was security. Okay. Okay. How's everybody doing out there? Is it working out for you? And again, how many do you have? Right. Okay, good. <laughs> I had a moment my breath for a second. <laughs> so there you go. Exactly. <laughs> If there's anybody out there who has gotten done as far as I have gotten done, go ahead and do another one. So admittedly, I think fast. Can you put it in it? Yeah. Yeah, I've been 
Happy Equinox, everybody. And I saw Robin today, so spring is on the way. I saw one yesterday. Such good news. So when I told my husband that this morning, he said, well, we have two more days of this, and then we're going back to winter. Yeah, that's right. Let's change their mind. But it's March, you know, then like a lion out like a man. Then like a lion out like a lion. Then like a lion out like a lion. <laughs> that's why I'm in I know that's what I was thinking. It is beautiful. And last year it was cold and hot. Well, June. June. Yeah. 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 Can you show the example, please, that had the cattails? We have a person here using that, and they wanted to see the background. Thank you so much. Um, this is my cattail. So I didn't actually do a cattail demonstration, but that's the one I did. Thank you. Did anybody else do like, oh, I'll have to see. Person doing the cattail, on this one I did put a background line in and then I just painted these, um, these cattail things, the grasses, thank you for the word. Uh, so your cattail will be different, but generally that's how I did it. I have someone here that's doing it and they are painting the cattails coming up and then they're going to paint the solid black at the bottom later. It's much easier with the sun. Judy, you're not hyper focused or just because I um, lost my antlers and made Tracy. So I'm going to find a <laughs> yeah, that's why I I was thinking about trying to superimpose this on the very top. Go for it. Now that you've got the technique down, you have to put the charcoal, the, did you do that already? You have to. 
Oh, I have to do that first. That's and then try to Yes, exactly. I'm going to try to do this. Okay. And I'm going to put it, I don't know why I'm not that. Why not? Why not? And it's easy. Famous last words. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, that looks easy. I think it will be. I think it's a good idea. Now I understand why, of course, the way it uh, okay. takes me a minute. It takes me a minute, a little slow. From the lead and the water down to all of it. The lead and the water down where? Down to all of the wrong job. That's my excuse. Okay, I'll, I'll go for it. So if anybody's ready for the moon, give me a thumbs up. It's going to involve white paint, obviously. This one looks like that Father Brown character. How the
I didn't have my glasses on when I looked out of it. I couldn't figure out what it was. I couldn't figure out why it was orange. Yeah. Did you moon turn out? Moon turn out again? Yeah. So my goal right here and then it's one of Oh, no. Okay. Oh, perfect. So everybody can give me a thumbs up when you've gotten this far all the silhouette painted in. And we'll keep telling the moon next. So, Michael, do your buildings have windows in them? Yeah. The they do. And that was good to try to do that. What I would do, which one did you do? You did this one right here, right? Yeah, the low sign. Yeah. Okay, so that one? Yeah. Okay, so what I would do is I would initially not paint the little lines going across the window, just paint paint around the square. That's window. what I already did. See, great lines think the light. And I wasn't exposed to the lead water in Rollins. Yeah. So I must be an accident. Yeah, there you go. Am I am I fan? Oh, it could be warm to the wire unless you make it blue. You have to change that, right? All right, can I get a thumbs up from the other libraries if they're ready to move on? All right, I saw some. Alpine, are you guys still working? Alpine gave a thumbs up. Yes. Okay, is everybody ready then? No. <laughs> oh, we're still working here. All right, so for the white, what I want you to do is, um, I, I would use titanium white. Again, we have two tubes of white in our, in our, um, our kit, and one just says white and one says titanium white. I'm not sure what the difference is. Usually it's zinc white and titanium white, and zinc white has better coverage but we're gonna use our titanium white for this. And you're gonna need it to be quite thick. Someone here has already done it and uh, a bit of the yellow and red showed out underneath it. So she's gonna do two layers. Um, I picked the totally wrong brush for this. It's too small. So I would pick for your brush, 
I'm not sure about the angle brush. All right, I'm gonna try my angle brush, but I don't know if that's the answer. I've never used an angle brush. Sword, it's called a sword, sorry. The sword brush, All right? I'm coming into my white and I've got a pretty big blob of white on there. Can everybody see that? Sword brush, did you just write that? Aren't you clever? <laughs> okay, and then we just, what we're trying to do is we're, we don't have very much water in there and also that we're not picking up the paint underneath. And yes, I think the sword brush is a good choice because it's giving me a nice fine line right around this circle. And I'm gonna paint everything at the top of my circle, my moon, my moon symbol. very carefully and using it thickly. And I'm not scrubbing back and forth. If you start scrubbing back and forth, you will pick up what's underneath. Let's put it around here. Very, very thick. And it's probably inevitable that some of that red and orange is gonna show through, uh, but I'm not worried about that because like I said, we can do another layer of white right on top. And then I'm coming down and I'm painting very carefully around my person. And this is going to take a, um, a little bit of control. You might want to add a little bit more water. It's pretty hard to paint detail with thick paint. So I had to thin it down just a little bit to get into that detail around the hat. Tamar, did you put a ponytail on the person? No, not yet. Okay. I want to. <laughs> okay. And also, if you do paint around a little bit of the black, you can always come in and <clears throat> paint right on top. Re if you paint some of your white on top of the black, you will be able to fix it later. So I'm just very carefully painting around the edge of the person or the horse or the um would a look okay to just have the moon higher up so it doesn't touch the yes, moon? yes, that's a good point. If you put your moon higher up, you don't need to worry about this at all. You just paint the moon with the white. Which I totally wish I had done at this point. <laughs> just saying, okay. I do like the sword brush. Mm -hmm. There you go, there's my moon. And sometimes what you'll notice when you're painting is that you get some texture on there when it's it's a little bit thicker. That will usually flatten out and you won't even notice it once the painting is dry. So oh boy, he sure stands out. She he it <laughs> the human sure stands out, right? So that's what we're going for. And you can see with this one that I did reactivate a little bit of um, the red underneath. And if I just go over it with more white, it will resolve that. Everybody heard that. <laughs> no, I'm flushing the paint colors down. It's been immortalized on YouTube, Judy Flushing and Pearls and that. <laughs> so you can see that this is dry, and then when I put a second layer on there, it really turns white. Have you done it yet, Kim? It's pretty thick. 
Oh, the initial paint we get down, yeah. And yeah, it was an orange moon before. So. so the first part you said was to trace the cup, right? I just used the cup as a circle. Okay, and trace it with pencil? Yeah, and I just drew a circle in there. Okay. It's a huge moon, but why not, you know? I mean, sometimes they look that big. They do. Talk about my own, right? Mm -hmm. Touch. I've seen them look pretty huge on the ocean, too. If you're doing the the um, cattails and whatnot, it would really be easiest to paint your moon first and then to bring a cattail up over it, which is what I actually did here, but now I'm just repainting. In reality, it would probably have been better to have painted the uh, white first, <laughs> but this way, it's to do it smoothly back and forth to get this nice, uh, nice. Well, this isn't all that smooth. <laughs> to get a nice smooth transition here, it's it's usually better to do the whole page in the background and then paint whatever we're going to paint on top. That's in gouache. That is not true in watercolors. In watercolors, we would paint around. Or we'll block it. There we go. Well, I do want to go back and add the cat tails and the moon. Do we need to wait to do that? Yes. What kind of white did you say that you were? I changed the white. Weird, I can add any water into mine and it activated the, the red. Yes. Did you want to do that? No, but it, I you know I'm not hating that, but I'm going to let it dry and then go over. <laughs> Which almost all of us have to do that. Yeah, you've got to get it pretty thick. It really in order to not activate it. Yeah, yeah. That's just something we can Okay. You'll probably do the same thing. So don't sweat it if it's um, reactivating the uh, right 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 right. right. yeah. Next week we are going to intentionally be reactivating the Next week is pretty exciting. It's not going to be there next week. Oh, that's it. That... I'm going to be on an airplane flying into Jackson. Flying to where? I'm going to fly into Jackson. Oh, oh come on. I was like, why would you fly up to Jackson from here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be flying into Jackson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're going to miss this one. But then you'll have that one. Fine. But I'm going to be in the wild. Well, uh, okay, talk about big moons. They have big moons up there. Take your sketchbook, Michael. Do you have a sketchbook? I don't. I, I've, never, <clears throat> I've never really understood how much I really enjoyed it. Good. We hope we see you in future classes. I can't believe it, but the effort I made today to make sure I caught it. <laughs> it's like, holy cow, I actually really enjoyed that class. Very well, thank you. Yes, I enjoyed it too. It's relaxed. I'm not missing a good job, Judy. It's making it really fun. <laughs> it's good because it had worries. That's so much fun. I look forward to, to this day. What is she doing now? Oh, 
<laughs> and just FYI, so you can, you know, see how I blended other colors with the violet and coming down. So it does not have to be a two color process, but I think I'm happy with the stuff of the two colors. We had four colors actually, because this is, someone just asked, you know, uh, about the violet. And when you are doing a painting like this, where you have violet that transitions into yellow, violet and yellow down at the bottom are complementary colors. So if my yellow mixes with my violet, it will turn gray. So, and also we're using a warm red. So what I did was yellow to my warm red to a cool red to a violet. And that gives me that nice transition so that I don't get gray up the top like this. This would be gray up the top. I mean, it's still violet, but it grayed down a lot. Okay. Okay. So it always amazes me when this is done that we've actually, we've actually produced what we showed we would produce. And it's like, wow, we really did do this. Wow, this is cool. We artists are happy when what we want to make turns out. <laughs> well, my little house is kind of like in the nightmare before Christmas. Oh, I well, love the nightmare before Christmas. Close enough. I know a guy who went to um, college with him. Oh, oh really? my gosh, I love it. <laughs> it's my uh, my uh, wife's office of ghost. What what I would do is bring that one out to the edges. That's what that's really cool. And then you can put this in your gun. She totally went wrong. It was so fun. I'm so much yeah, that was a good decision. I Is it hard? It's hard for you to paint that small, isn't it? I wonder if she wait a second. It's one of the possibilities. Thank you. 
Well, and if you look at mine, there's the initial one, uh, color. Yeah, and I thought it kind of yeah. Yeah, well, it's that's one. Um, it's just as I do like that Risa and mine, and it could. Are you guys still in the same thing? And I don't know if you can see on. So it's not even that so different. Are you just looking for the fish? Exactly it. And it is amazing how you can all be doing the same thing in so many different things. You know. Do we have any of the other branches that are ready to show what they worked on this week to show their pictures off? Thank you. At that time, believe it. Camera, it looked like somebody there was ready to. Oh my God, look at that. That is beautiful. It's beautiful. Yes, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Stacy, let me see. Oh, that is nice. Thank you. That's all we have ready. Well, it's ready. But I can see this one right here too. Yes. Is anyone, are any of the others? Cokeville, are you guys ready? Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Judy, she did this one with yeah, that. Awesome. Well done. Did you yeah. do both of those? Very good. You got a beautiful transition. Wow. Do you like them? Someone did a black one? Someone did the solar eclipse. I love that. That's... Thank you. Some people did too. I'm really happy about that. She was on the show. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this one. Wow, well done on that tree. Yes. And look at how she blew that up. Wow. Some talented people. Where are we? Yes, we're in Cokeville. Cokeville. Is that Cokeville? <laughs> Do it. Do it. Is that Cokeville? That yes, was that was Cokeville. You guys always totally yeah. rock in Cokeville. I've been telling people since my last class that Cokeville has a lot of talent. Down All there. right, Alpine, are you guys ready? And there's Alpine. Alpine All right. Too. Here we go. Oh my gosh, that turned out beautiful. Nice. Very, very good. It looks like he pre painted that. Good. Look at this, another two for, oh my gosh. I love that. Thank you. Oh, look at this one, Branch. Wow. I love how yours maintain the yellow very good thing. Okay, I like that. I like that a lot. I want to be in your landscape. <laughs> oh, look at that, another tree one. Very, very good. I'm glad you guys chose that. Thank you. All right. Me. Thank you, Alpine. Let's see. Uh, who else did we have? Afton or Labarge, are either of you ready to show off? Here's Afton. Oh, somebody went off totally with the blue. Thank you. Thank you for let me see the blue one too. Wow. It's like a midnight landscape. That one very well done. <laughs> All right, that's all that's ready. Labars, do you have anyone that's ready? 
Thane, if you guys want to get ready oh, to show. <laughs> Here's LaBarge. Oh, look at LaBarge, you guys. Oh, my gosh. You guys did great. You really maintained your yellow and your moons are gorgeous. Well done. Remember when peeling the tape to peel away from your image. Always peel away from your image. All right. We're coming to Thane. She's still feeling away from her image. <laughs> Everybody, so I can show the word. That, that. I kind of actually like it. It's not just like sometimes you need to have it. I agree. That's good. Thank you. That's very beautiful. Okay, I go with this one, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So here's two. Here's Thane. Oh, Michael, here's Look at one. this one. That one turned out oh, really good. So beautiful. Oh, good. Some more cat, too. Yeah, really. Like Look that. at that. Oh, I haven't taken on that. That's one. beautiful. Oh, it turned out so good. You know? Sure did. Yeah. She still has tape on. Whoop, I can't find a good angle. Wait, which? Oh, it's because I was totally starting to rock. Wow. I love how you lifted that up. Thank you. Very good. Okay, now I get to keep all these, right? <laughs> and this, any other final instructions or comments before we have uh, No, just I want to show everybody what we're going to do next week. Next week, we are going to be um, doing this. Okay, so next week, what we're going to be doing is reactivating the blue. So we're going to be painting blue. And then we're going to put white on top and we're going to make clouds out of it. Oh. So we're going to reactivate the blue and then we're going to learn how to spritz for stars. Okay. And then more flowers, obviously more flowers. So that's next week. Okay. And just to keep you coming the following week, we're going to be doing more clouds oh. at night. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Thank you for seeing oh, that. Wow. So I look forward to seeing everybody next week. I'm so pleased. Everybody did really, really good. Well done, you guys. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.